isn't there a lot of nonsense on Twitter? Absolutely. What about the pushback you get from, well, look, I'm a clinician, show me the data. Yes. And yes. show me a peer-reviewed clinical journal, and then I will, I'll read that, but Twitter? Yeah. What, as a clinician. Right, so I it, knew that would be yeah. the barrier. So when I met Dr. Nawome, mm -hmm. and I said, look, I'm going to try to start using Twitter to reach surgeons, and mm -hmm. I need you to help me, because you have this network of over 5,000 yes. surgeons. Mm -hmm. You're my voice, because they don't know me. I'm not a surgeon, so I'm not gonna have that instant credibility. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm a healthcare provider, but I'm not a surgeon, You know, so I'm not in your circle. I need you to help me, but Ben, mm -hmm. knowing people in medicine are evidence-based, we're gonna do this as a study. We're not just gonna do it and say, we feel this worked, that doesn't work in medicine. We're gonna do it as a study. So we actually set it up as a study and mm -hmm. published it. And it was fascinating. And we actually did medical grand rounds at the Ohio State University Department of Surgery on Twitter, didn't think in my entire career, A, those are coveted lectures planned mm -hmm. a year in advance, but uh, Dr. Ellison, head of surgery, understood the value and he understood what I was trying to accomplish. As a surgeon, surgeons need to use antibiotics. Sure. If you have a surgical procedure and yep. there's no prophylactic antibiotic given, uh, your patient has a high probability of getting an infection that they can die from. So surgeons are one of the highest users of antibiotics, rightfully so. My job is to make sure as we have antibiotic resistance, which is a moving target, so when a KPC occurs, which mm -hmm. was nothing they learned about in medical school yes. because it never existed back then, what is their vehicle to learn about this? I can't give a lecture to 100 surgeons in real time. Twitter is the vehicle. So it's not the end all, it's just another communication tool that reaches them in a very different way. So let's just keep going, because this yeah. is so fascinating. So there's a method to the madness, yes. right? It's not just you know your, your word or you know, anecdotal data. You actually did some studies on this. We did. So, so we set yeah. it up as a study, mm -hmm. and we uh, taught, we had our surgeons volunteer if they would participate in active tweeting and then we, so I as an infectious disease expert along with our surgical and um, clinical pharmacist who had that network of surgeons, we tweeted relevant infectious disease topics to a surgeon. So, you know, there's a lot of infectious disease topics, but a lot of them don't really apply okay. to a Before surgeon. Before you get there, I wanna, I'm going to do the eye roll for okay. you. Okay. Okay. You recruited surgeons to do active tweeting. Yep. Let's just talk about recruitment. And we sure. know that trial recruitment for patients is hard. But trial recruitment for physicians on Twitter, it must have been brutal. Was there uptake oh, or yeah, let's Absolutely. Uh -huh. Well, remember, the chair of surgery was my advocate. There's a lot of power. Okay, that's when good. The, when Ooh. the head of surgery says, y'all need to participate in this, <laughs> Even there's with a the hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And But actually, many of the surgeons at OSU were already on Twitter. Did you find it was... Um, Younger surgeons, older surgeons, ah, that's women and men. That's a great mm -hmm. thing because that's what I hear all the time. I'm not 20. Um, oh, this is for the younger generation. Mm. Yes, they grew up with these tools. We did not. But no, my head of surgery is 71. Mm -hmm. They realized this was a vehicle that they could learn and engage with each other in a different setting. But yes, one of the younger surgeons mm -hmm. who would never be asked to do surgical grand rounds. That's a very um, prestigious, prestigious role sure. mm -hmm. at a university. And that's exactly what he stated. He was the most active and really got the division on it, Christian Jones. And Christian's probably in his 30s. He was a brand new surgical attending. Would never be asked to do surgical grand rounds. But our grand rounds, at Ohio State University was Christian Jones, 30-something, mm -hmm. Dr. Ben Nwome, myself mm -hmm. as a pharmacist, that's yeah. sort of unheard of, and then Dr. Chris Ellison, who is head of surgery. So we, in essence, had four generations to dispel wow, that's that it's just the young. That, did you kind of do that? Did, it did sort of just it fell happened? that way. Wow, isn't that amazing? It that really it was, but way. you know, they all mm -hmm. understood the power of using Twitter as a communication tool in real time. And surgeons of any discipline, surgeons and oncologists, mm -hmm. you know, if you have a bone marrow transplant and you're in my hospital 30, 60 days recovering, you know, unfortunately, 
people acquire we'll infections sure. in hospitals, not because we're doing bad things. People don't wash that's their hands. That's where the bugs live. You know, exactly. <laughs> that's their home. They're yeah. waiting to infect. So you might acquire one of these multi-drug resistant gram negatives. I've got a handful of effective antibiotics to select from. I mean a handful, and mm -hmm. those that handful is dwindling every day. It's fewer and fewer. How am I going to teach those oncologists in real time about any new antibiotic that comes to market? You know, they're controlled by antibiotic stewardship programs. We tell them you can't use these. We're going to control them. And that's, that's good, but we want to make sure they're used responsibly. But it's a little unsettling when you're calling a physician and stating your patient has this uh, Klebsiella pneumonia carbapenemase, this gram-negative enterobacter, or you've got this drug-resistant pseudomonas infection, and they're like, I don't understand, and I'm going to recommend you use this new antibiotic that you know zero information All about. All I know is about beta-lactamase. Yeah. Carba carbapenemase is not even on my Those radar, are even worse. right? But yeah. the point is, what you're saying to me right now are some of our physicians. Sure. They don't read infectious diseases. That's not their expertise. Just like I'm not a surgeon. I'm not going to be reading journals on well, the latest surgical to, right. tool because yeah. mm -hmm. I don't use it. But every physician, every physician, every nurse practitioner, every clinical pharmacist that prescribes an antibiotic mm -hmm. has to have knowledge to prescribe them responsibly. Sure. And how do you convey knowledge in real time as we have outbreaks literally occurring that we've never seen before? Well, it's funny. We talk about... Um, the diffusion of innovation, and, and oftentimes we call them viral. <laughs> and you know, a viral when you're tweet right, goes it's going viral, viral. Boy, I mean, there you have it. I mean, it's not it, you know, it's it's it just seems to be such an interesting connection.